Right, welcome to the CrossFit by Design podcast. We're going to flip the script. Oh, I'm not even, uh, I'm Brendan. This is Tom. Yes. I might start that again. Hello, people. Yeah. <laughs> I'll start that again. Okay. All right, uh, welcome to the CrossFit by Design podcast. I'm here with Tom. Hello, Hello. Tom. Hello. Brendan. Yeah. <laughs> How are you? If this doesn't sound quite right, it's because I'm not usually the one who does the interviewing and we're finding out why right now. Mm. Um, Suck. Yeah. <laughs> but Tom had some lessons from the Congo um, and we thought it would be a good episode to sort of discuss those lessons that you've learned or things mm. you've taken away from your time in the Congo. Mm. Um, and yeah, it makes more sense to me for me to lead off. Yeah, cool. And for you to explain. So, yeah, could you elaborate or maybe explain some of the things you've learned while you're over in the Congo? Yeah, yeah, there's obviously a whole bunch of lessons and things which I've taken away from, in a positive sense, from my time in the Congo. And, you know, we've discussed those in another episode previously. So if you want to go back and listen to that, you can. Uh, in particular, I wanted to talk about one thing which to me really stood out. And it didn't, didn't necessarily stand out immediately, but as you reflect upon the time that you spend in the country and then coming back to the different culture, because that's the, there's a huge culture difference, when you reflect and compare the two cultures, you start to pick up things uh, in, your, in this culture and in our lives that you don't recognise until you've had a, a perspective change. And one of those things is that focusing on others makes your problems go away. Um, so for me, in the lead up to my trip, I, like, I was very stressed out. Um, I tend to internalise things a lot and therefore a lot of my so-called problems seem to be amplified more than they necessarily should. And what I found is that going over you know, to the Congo, I'm doing my missions work and all the projects and of course the focus is completely on who I'm helping, who I'm working with, and what I'm doing. The purpose is to help others and to improve the flourishing of other people. That's the whole point of why I'm going. And so what I found was placing your attention on the benefit and flourishing of others is, it serves as like a powerful medicator for your own problems. Um, and so when the, the attention shifts from yourself onto, okay, like this person's having this problem or we've got this entire people group that are going through this. Um, and not only just if someone is going through a tougher situation than you, but the act of focusing your attention and work on others seems to turn your own problems just into this mist and they just seem to go away because you're focusing on helping others and, it, it, you, and your problems don't even matter. And so that was one of the things that when I started to reflect, it became quite apparent um, to me coming back here because all of a sudden you come back here and then those problems start to materialise out, yeah. of, out of thin air all, all, all again. So Yeah, that's interesting. Do yeah. you think it can go too far the other way? Like there's that, you know, <clears throat> you can't pour from an, an empty cup mm. kind of thing. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't say that's a problem that most of us are going to run into. But yeah. like, there is, It's definitely, um, and you see this a lot in you know, charity organisations, church organisations, and of course, just in any business, uh, there's a risk of burnout. Uh, and that normally comes from not having the right motives behind why you're doing something. If you're doing something for the right reasons um, and with the right people around you, you know, you can never do these things alone. So I would say a combination of, yes, the pendulum can go too far, but if you've got the right people, the right team around you, uh, you know, good quality people in your corner, as well as if you're doing it for the right reasons uh, and for in pure motives, then I would say that's that's sort of a, a hedge against what you're talking about. You know, which is just the burnout where you're not pouring in, yeah. um, you're just pouring out. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think, you know, I, I was trying to come up with linguistic terms in how to best describe it, and the only thing I could think of was. You know, when your aim is to see others exalted in a sense or flourishing, to see them be raised, to see them go up in their life um, rather than yourself, it takes the concerns and sort of the weightiness of the missed expectations 
and the desires you have on yourselves because we typically tend to place all these expectations and we have our desires and our wants and that tends to weigh us down because of course if we don't meet those things then oh, you know this problem I, I wanted to be doing this job or I wanted to be this this far advanced in my job or my career or I was hoping that my kids would be like this or whatever the problems are you seem to have all these expectations um, but when you're focusing on not linking the expectations on yourself but on the improvement of others, you almost take yourself out of the picture and not that you want to neglect yourself, of course. Of course, you know, you have to look after yourself to help others, but um, by removing the link of the expectations and the desires linking to yourself and putting them onto others, um, it, it has this, it's very difficult to explain, but it just has this impact of completely um, making the way you live your life seems so much freer. And it's almost like this is the way humans were meant to operate. It just seems like the mechanism of the human function just seems to flow perfectly, almost as if that's kind of the way like we were engineered to be. So it's, it's an interesting thing when you start to sort of think about this, mm. um, which you can obviously yeah. get too crazy when you start to think <clears throat> too deeply about it. Well, I mean, it's good though, but you can definitely go down the rabbit hole. Mm. So do you think that this was such a big revelation for you. I mean, maybe it was something you knew all along, but when you went, when you sort of made the trip and you immersed yourself in your mission mm. over there, yeah. and you had that, like what we're talking about now, yep. it's like, oh my God, I'm sort of seeing what it's all about. Yeah, yeah. How come it's so hard to see here? Like there's too many distractions or it's you're getting pulled in too many directions? Yeah, like, yeah. Do you think you would have ever seen it so I'm not a very good interview. I'm asking you like 10 questions. No, no, no. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm tracking with you. Yeah. Yep. Do you think you would have seen it if you hadn't made the trip over to the Congo? Like obviously you've still, this would still be a mission. Mm. But what if you were just, you never made the trip? Yeah, I, I think I think it's a very, a very good point. And I definitely believe that it's not about, you know, whether it's just the Congo. It's just having a different perspective of unless you've truly put yourself in a position where you are living only for the benefit of others and not for yourself. So you've put yourself in a position where you're almost sacrificing everything for others and whatever that looks like, whether it's the Congo, whether it's helping this, doing that, whatever the, the situation looks like, until you've been in that position, your perspective doesn't change because this world, this culture, the way we've set up Western culture is to exalt ourselves. It's all about how can we live a lifestyle so that it makes things easier for us. It's all about us. So we're almost set up to fail in that sense. Um, and I've heard someone like Ben Bergeron and a lot of other CrossFit people talk about with regards to nutrition and training. The whole culture is set around trying to make you feel happier and better and more comfortable. And we have all these options and choices to actually do that. It's quite easy to live a comfortable and happy life here in, in, in our cultures. Yeah, sure. And so therefore it's set up in a way that just makes it so easy to live for yourself. And let's be honest, like who wouldn't want to live for ourselves? Like if you can make your life better and make your life comfortable and focus on yourself, like why, why not? And so that's where I think you're spot on. It's just hard to see it in this particular culture because in other cultures, you don't have any other option. Mm. Uh, of, there is no choice to raise yourself up. Um, but here, that's what everything's focused on. So in, the only way you would see that of what we're talking about is if you forcibly made the decision to, like, I'm going to not choose to live yeah. for myself. And this helps you to connect with people, you know, bring it back to the, you know, the CrossFit gym. Um, one of the things that makes a community so special, and this is sort of applying the lesson practically, is um, when you begin to see the problems that other people have, and make those problems your problems. So you you don't just see someone's problem. Oh, you know, my my leg got broken and now I can't drive to work. And like, oh, that sucks. And then you continue on with your life instead of saying, okay, well, if I had a broken leg, that'd suck. And almost treating it as if you had a broken leg yourself and not moving on with your life until you've found a way to help that person. So you make their problems your problem. That will be a practical way of how a community builds those bonds is when the person not only gets the sense that you care about them, but they see you applying that by making your problems their problems. And so I would see that as being a, a practical way of yeah, applying that to a community. So, Do you think it might be 
I think it's like anything else that's good for you. Mm. So changing your nutrition, changing your workout habits, yep. developing yourself in a positive direction in any way. It's, like, yep. it's hard work. Yeah, it's always hard. So Nothing good ever comes easy, bro. <laughs> yeah, but it's just one of those things. It's like until you start to yeah. actively work on it, it's just... Yeah. There's yeah. no way it's going to improve. Yeah, and the problem is choice. Like we've, and it's it's great to have choice, and we love. We've worked for hundreds and hundreds of years in this society to have choice, um, but with choice comes an incredible difficulty, which mm. is that you have to choose the right thing, and that makes it hard. And mm. so sometimes you go to a culture, you see where they have no choice; they just have to have what they have, which is not much, and therefore you come back and like, oh man, I just I wish all these choices were taken away from me. I wish, I wish the only option I had was chicken and broccoli three yeah. times a, a day, and that was it. But that's not what we have, and yeah. that's not the culture we've built, so deal with it. <laughs> that's interesting. Uh, yeah, I, I was thinking about that the other day. In, on deployment, when you go on deployment, a lot of lads, they get a lot fitter and healthier because they don't have any choice. No it's distractions, like, yeah. There's no distractions. It's like you go on patrol, you do your job, and then if you have the opportunity to go back on base, then you eat, and there's a gym there, and you can go to the gym, yeah. and that's it. Yeah. There's no distractions. <laughs> yeah. And then they come home and it's just like, it's all over. Because then, oh, there's a pub. You want to go to the pub? Pub's down the road. Like, Heck oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> just got, just returned, mate. <laughs> and it's the same for nutrition. It's like the choice is like a big issue there. Like, mm. you know, we talk a lot about in the nutrition course, like cleaning out your kitchen and setting yourself up for success so yeah. you don't have to make the choice. Mm. Um, making the choice to work out. Yeah. Making the choice to, you know, change your life in any positive yeah. way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. that's one of the challenges of the Western culture is building the mental fortitude to make the right choices because the choice isn't going away. You've got to make the decision yourself and that kind of makes or breaks people and you see what people are made of based on how they deal with having a choice. So, mm. yeah. I think we should cut it there. <laughs> nice. Awesome. All right, thanks, Tom. Thank you.